this. Can you see this? Okay. This is Andy's chair. He carried it. And here's the thing. We've been doing this for years. Is that if he carries the chair, he sits on it. Kevin doesn't carry a chair. That's too bad for Kevin. But uh, I always thought when he was sitting on his chair that he was uh, breaking wind. <laughs> he was, listen. Oh yeah, we're supposed to say this is our last. This is our last night, and um, this is really kind of funny. That, uh, this is our last night, and we're supposed to talk about how we liked the trip and how we didn't like the trip, that sort of thing, the goods and bads. I was uh, told for many, uh, many years I should go to Woodland Caribou Provincial Park, and uh, I didn't go. I, maybe it's because people were telling me to go. Um, it wasn't my decision. But all of a sudden, it was just, it was like, oh, an idea. I should, we, we should go and uh, give it a try. Andy had gone before, Bill and Ann had gone before, and they're, they're raving about it. But I really did think it was going to be like Wabakimi or even even like sort of James Bay sort of lowland spruce fog stuff the whole entire time. It is not at all like that. Was I upset that I did not see a caribou? Everybody's saying no, no, they're not, they're, it's okay, we didn't see it. Yeah, I'm very upset that I did not see with a caribou. I wanted Andy and Bill to dress up as one one day just to surprise me. We saw lots of signs of them. They're, they are all over the place. Every Not every campsite, probably 50% of the campsites we saw were, we saw scat and on the portage trails, uh, we saw uh, hoof prints uh, in a, n a number of places. So they're around and that's, you know, that's the elusiveness of them. The fact that you rarely ever see those critters is one thing, but when you catch even a glimpse of their tracks or whatever, you know, it's cool to be sharing uh, the same footprint as them, even on a temporary basis. So. If you saw them every day, they wouldn't be as special. Uh, we didn't get the opportunity to see them this trip. I'm sure they saw us, so that, that's that's the, the neat thing. I think the biggest thing is we actually spent a good amount of time here, good quality time. Uh, I, it's, it's a 10-day trip, but I think right now our brains are at like day 20. It doesn't really matter how many days we're out here at this point. Once we reach the day five or day four, uh, we just go on for like a couple months, not really, well, maybe you know, a couple months. People wonder where we are. But the interesting thing about a 10 day trip is that on day six, you start working backwards from the end. And so the last four days are tend to be much more orchestrated than the first six. And so, um, yeah, it, I'm sad to go. I could go for another four days. Easy. This is my second time in Woodland Caribou. And, uh, I would come back in a heartbeat. It's got such a variety of, of uh, wonderful places to explore and uh, uh, different sites to see. It's got uh, cultural heritage with pictographs and, and sites. It's got uh, natural heritage in the fire-driven ecology and the unique woodland caribou and even wolverine that are in this area. One of my favorite uh, parts of the park here, or at least this trip, was uh, um, not bathing once and, uh, and sharing a tent with Kevin. And finally, I think, you know, I could go to sleep and not smell Kevin. That was, uh, that was one of the, the really nice parts of the trip. So, uh, yeah, my, my tent partner complained about me not bathing last trip. This trip, you know, not a word. In fact, uh, probably got more snuggles out of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. Um, there's not a lot of change. I uh, when we were, when I was here last time, we didn't see. Uh, we saw two other parties. In this trip, this time, we saw two other parties. Um, the entire trip. Uh, so. Um, and even where there are lakes with lodges uh, and motorboat users, last trip uh, I think we saw them once, and this trip maybe a couple of times. So, um, you know, it's, uh, I, I, I think I'd noticed some areas that have been burnt that weren't burnt before, and those areas that were burnt before have now grown up into, uh, Obviously, 20 odd years later, um, there's uh, a forest that has risen out of the ashes. So that's kind of cool. I like smaller lakes opposed to big lakes and a lot of creek work and a little bit of river work. Of course, we were always going upriver because you don't like running whitewater. So, um, but a lot of that is, is still enjoyable. 
The lakes here are all so interconnected that it's easy to paddle and make up a route, change a route. You don't have to do exactly what you set out to do. You can tweak it and adjust and, and that's really kind of nice uh, to have that flexibility. I love northwestern Ontario to be quite honest. I, I love paddling in northwest Ontario more than any other, other part of the province because there's so much water and little portaging. The average portage here is like 100 meters. There's lots of them. Like we do a 60, a 50, a 40, a 100, 140. And I think today we did eight, like eight portages. But there wasn't one over 140 meters today. So you can't really complain about that. The one thing about Woodland Caribou, I got to say, it's not, it's not that easy. Uh, it, it's, it is a remote park. Uh, it's doable, but I wouldn't choose this as your very first route. Uh, even though the, the route itself is really easy, but we are remote here. And you, you need to know some bush skills before you go up here. But that's why it's so nice. If you've gone on trips before, like uh, to Quetico or to any other park, um, and you want to step it up a little bit, not a huge notch, but step it up a little bit, go to Willow and Caribou. You won't see anybody, really. My women friends are way more ribald than the three of you. <laughs> And, uh, and um, I've been skinny dipping since I was two, and so it's great to have a gang to skinny dip with. <laughs> <laughs> the native stuff was kind of neat, uh, seeing all the native paintings, uh, because we, here we are with our Kevlar canoes and our, our nylon packs. Uh, we just realized that actually, you know, we weren't at all the first to travel in these, in these areas. People lived here and thrived here. So it was kind of nice to see that part of the culture here and the history and be part of it. Um, I think they were more in close with nature at that time, to be quite honest, because we're only here for 10 days and we've reconnected. You imagine living here, you would be connected for sure, right? I think we all need that, actually. We all need to get out of civilization for a while and reconnect. Who was that? Brought out a few, a few beers here for you on Harlan's orders, so have at her. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! What do you think of that, guys? That's perfect. My hero, go. Tim. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to your good health. Oh, oh we're good now. Will you join us? Hers. Partake there, eh? Thank you. Will you join us? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd have a beer here. I guess. Yes, why not? Yeah. Don't tell Harlan that.